Jesus. All right, and uh, Javas, uh, quite a bit there. And if you'll allow me to just quote the Constitution, Chapter 6, on leadership and integrity, because that's where some say that Matiangi possibly is uh, undergoing um, or failing. And seg uh, Segment 3 of uh, the first part says that... Uh, the uh, uh, responsibilities of leadership uh, should show or demonstrate respect for the people. Do you think that uh, it's getting to a point where the Constitution is merely just a piece of paper that we don't seem to follow? Well, it hasn't come and it will not come to that point where it remains merely a piece of paper. But if we have to, we have to read Chapter 6 of the Constitution, we have also to read it jointly with the, uh, Article uh, 232 of the same Constitution that talks about the values of public service. Now, a couple of other questions would arise. Matiangi is a public servant. To what extent has he acted, and together with the others, have they acted in such a manner that brings glory, uh, great repute, to the Constitution and even to the offices they hold? Yes, we know very well when you look at even Article, you know, uh, article 3, so Article 1 of the Constitution about the defense and protection of the same. And that's why even the petitioner has moved, uh, has you know, presented that petition to Parliament. It tells you that there is an awakening, a consciousness that is sustained about the necessity of observing and protecting the rule of law and observance of the same. <clears throat> so when the cabinet secretary <clears throat> sorry, acts in such a manner that um, brings a bit of disrepute to the office that he holds, when we see a fine demonstration of arrogance served to Kenyans through a parliamentarian, you know, the parliamentary committee, then one wonders, that uh, has somebody forgotten the various roles that all these arms should play? When I first sat a couple of years ago in uh, the class of law and the issues of separation of powers were being imparted into us, we were told clearly that it is the place of the executive to implement laws that have been passed by parliament. Mm. And remember that parliament, beyond the passing of laws, also plays the role of oversight. Any person who watched that uh, presentation by Matangi that day would have wondered what um, inaugural lecture it was to the parliamentary committee. Mm -hmm. He was actually not being grilled. He was presenting a paper that was pointing a finger and poking in the eyes of that committee itself. Let us come to an appreciation of a couple of facts. One, that there was a spitting on the constitution and the various provisions, including chapter six on leadership and integrity. And question of firmness and excellence in execution of services should not persuade or permit any person to have a bit of impunity in them in demonstration of the same. Whatever role any person occupies, let us remember that all good deeds, bad deeds will follow them. And that's why even upon the death of Caesar, we remember Mark Anthony saying that he comes to bury Caesar not to praise him and that whatever good he did, or bad, let that be interred with his bones. Mm -hmm. Matiangi should remember that whatever good he does while in office, or ill, it will checker his uh, good profile and legacy mm -hmm. as long as and even after he's done with the office that he presently holds. All right, Moses Oburi, your thoughts on what's been going on, and not just Dr. Matiangi, but generally uh, there has been a hue and cry, especially from uh, the civil society, that we have leaders in uh, the executive who are outrightly just, uh, you know, literally trampling over the constitution by virtue of the fact they've not obeyed court orders. We can see a level of impunity. Uh, <clears throat> I think not obeying a court order is a serious offense to the Constitution, and is a serious example uh, from the executive. Because the courts uh, act as, uh, as check, the, the ones who check the, uh, the ex excesses of the executive. Mm. And once the court pronounces itself on an issue, I think it, should be, be final. it behoves all of us, the president, down to his cabinet ministers, to, to, to observe it. And you, and you remember uh, President Moy, in his heydays, I mean, people say it was a dictator, but we never saw him go to the extent of brushing shoulders with courts. I mean, he appointed the judges, yes, but you never saw him uh, taking that route of uh, flagrant disobeying the orders. And I mean, this is a wrong example, being in a new, uh, under new dispensation, under the new laws, and these laws took a bit of, uh, of, 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 of work to get them to where, where we are. So. I think President Uhuru needs to rein in on, on his cabinet ministers because we've not had him 
uh, pronounce himself uh, over this Matiang issue. Mm -hmm. So he needs to provide leadership because Matiangi sits in his office. Mm -hmm. I mean, when Matiangi does something, people look at President Uhuru, what is he going to say? Okay. And Javas, do you think we'll ever get to a point where if a public servant, regardless of how, how high ranking they are, if they uh, are seen or are proved to be working against the Constitution at that point in time, then they should cease becoming a public <coughs> servant? Let me tell you one thing, that um, the sense of entitlement is what is killing us in Africa and in this country. Some of us always think, and I'm speaking collectively, that when it has fallen upon you to hold certain public office, that the country owes you for whether it is your profile or education or excellence, mm. and that nothing can happen to you. And it is this kind of uh, you know, uh, self-confidence, self-preservation, and a false sense of self-importance that keeps on making us violate and even undermine the offices that are held by public officers. Mm -hmm. I do not intend to be outrightly uh, you know, a, a scoffer at, uh, say, Matiang and his office and they're the public servants, Gordon Kalangwa, et cetera. Nope. The thing is this. If they must be indicted, then let them be indicted. If they are wrong, let them be called out. And when we say that it is proper for a parliamentary committee to do a particular role as it should, then let us also whether commend or otherwise of the same. Mm -hmm. Today, if you were to ask any person, did the parliamentary committee, for instance, live up to its role in terms of oversight satisfactorily? The answer will not likely be yes. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that, would it be necessary for us to embrace conscientiousness as a people, especially those who hold public office, that when it has been brought to our attention that we have not actually lived up to the reputation of our office, that the best thing to do is to move out of that office or step aside and grant room to any other person who is held in high esteem or reputable to that extent to continue discharging such duties. All right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, yeah, just finish off. I want to uh, cut you off a little bit because we need to take a break, but just finish yes. your line of So thought. I think it's not a question of uh, a continental issue, a national issue, etc. No, these are global concepts. Mm. And when it comes to leadership and its ethics, it is proper that we must be led by you know, common sense and all that, beyond the laws and policies that we have in this country. Mm. The greatest thing that I think we need in this country is common 